I feel good at Micah all. Micah is throwing beach nets at us. Micah, stop it. Anyways, we're here hiking at Eno River State Park. We have Micah there with a nut that he's throwing in the air and trying to hit our heads with. And we have Jakarta, who's being a normal person and actually spotting wildlife. Micah's throwing the nut again. So anyways, <laughs> we're going to be uh, hiking through some variable habitat. We'll start at the river, then we're going to go to a higher elevation area, hopefully, um, and just see what we find. The weather's actually really nice for herbs. It's cloudy. It's like 75, so I have high hopes. We had not found anything for quite a bit. We did find a cool trail, and I was poking around on a stump. We got this little guy. Look at this little cutie. Little DK's brown snake. Nothing too rare, but I actually haven't seen any of these this year. So, that's a nice find. Jakarta, what do you think about the DK's brown snake? Uh, this is the first, like, wild snake that I've ever actually held. So that's pretty cool. It's pretty ridiculous. What are your first thoughts? Uh, first thoughts are, even though it's tiny, it's a lot stronger than I thought. Like, I mean, it's not like it can move my hand or anything, but you can just feel it, like, tightening and, like, contracting. It's really cool. Nice. It's pretty epic. Yeah. It's a good first snake to hold. There's just little, <laughs> little derp noodles there. Yeah. <laughs> you get the cuteness without any of the scariness. Yeah. Sure. Michael, what's the scariest snake you ever held? I haven't held many, any scary snakes, honestly. Ever? What? Yeah. Yeah. Ben's like, oh, we need to change that. <laughs> we need to change it. No scary snakes. I mean, there's a snake that, the black rat snake that was like five feet long, maybe? It's pretty oh big. Gosh, it was that's, big. That's scary. And it was thrashing a little bit, so I like, it spooked well, me for a second, get, and I sort of what happened? dropped it. Oh, dang, if someone had been there to see that, it would have made them really angry, probably. Yeah, it made Ben really angry. <laughs> <laughs> the thing was, it was my first time holding a snake. Yeah, yeah. But after that, I'd like, there you go. Yes. I'm not scared. I've, I've Thank you. caught some snakes. Oh. Not some snake, a few snakes in my own hiking. They've always been really small, like like this one. Like a green, a green race. Oh, is it green racer or something like that? A gr Ooh, do you have green racers in Turkey? I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. Dig or looking like for digging for a snake because I don't know what is poisonous, what isn't, and what could bite me. That was Dang. a Shit. stick. <laughs> that was not a stick, man. That was a tree. That was a whole tree. <laughs> it was the tree, loud. The tree just fell down. We just heard like well, a cool. It was like boom. God. <laughs> they probably heard that on camera too, maybe. Uh, it's, it's harder to hear the deeper sound. Can I hold like He's so yes. cute. So, do you guys know anything about the ecology of the DK's brown snake yet? Not a clue. Not a clue. Mike, um, do you know anything about the I'm trying to remember. You can be in my wild. You can be the wild report this video if you do. I don't do. think I'll be a very good wild report this video. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm gonna trade you this camera for that snake, and then do my yeah. ecology segment. Something. And then Jakarta's gonna That's release really it chill. since it's Jakarta's first wild snake. Cool. Aww. His little Look face. It's like a like a really cute long muscle. That's exactly what it is. Look at his head. Hey, buddy. <sighs> I would kiss you, but I feel like my lips would terrify you. <laughs> Just crawl inside your mouth. He's like, <laughs> 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 the thing with this kind of small snake, it could do it. Yeah, because it's like, oh, dark space. This is good, good dark. <laughs> That's it would be great video footage, though. That would be horrifying. Yes. Actually, no, you wouldn't want to. A few moments later. All right, guys. So this, uh, as I've said already, is the DK's brown snake. Actually, one of the snakes that's most commonly confused with copperheads here in North Carolina because they are brown, and I do have patterning on the back, but. I can throw up a, a picture of a copperhead right now. They're totally different. If you look at this guy's patterning, it's kind of like uh, diamonds or maybe checkers running all down the back, and there's dozens of them. Um, and also the belly is pure white. But on a copperhead, what you would have would be Hershey Kisses on this side, um, and the belly has kind of a checkered pattern. So they are actually very different when you get them beside each other. It's just when you see a brown snake with patterning, people are like, oh man, that could be a copperhead. <laughs> Always better to be safe than sorry, um, but like you should never try to harass a snake or like kill it with a shovel or something just because it's brown. Because a lot of times it is these. These are totally harmless. Uh, they're a fossorial species, so most of their lives are spent underground or in rotting vegetation. Um, they're almost 100% um, insectivorous, so they're eating mostly invertebrates. Occasionally, a larger DK's brown snake might take something like a salamander or even a smaller reptile. Um, but at this size, he's pretty much just eating bugs, preferably worms, because they're slimy and they fit well in his little tummy. 
Uh, but these guys are totally adorable. They actually have really big eyes for fossorial snake, um, especially relative to their skull size. Usually fossorial snakes have teeny little eyeballs, um, but these are a lot more visual than other fossorials, and they come above ground uh, a little more often as well. Now this is not a fully grown individual. They can get about twice this size at maximum, although this is actually an adult. Um, so this is a very, very small species. Um, not commonly seen other than in like garden areas or like mulch piles because that's usually where they live. But they are super cool. As far as ecology goes, um, they're not, I wouldn't say they're like exactly a keystone species. But they are still an important kind of lower level consumer. So they're eating those insects. But they're also food for things like opossums. Lots of burrowing mammals will dig these up and eat them. Um, and also any bird of prey that caught one out in the open would definitely make a snack a little decus brown snake, but they're adorable, so there's no reason to be scared of them. We'll get some macro shots and then throw them back in the log. Right, I'll be back. Jakarta, are you ready to release this fantastic beast? Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> All back. Alrighty. So, where are you putting them? We can just slide them. He'll probably slide into that uh, dead stuff right there. Alright, Coolio. Bye-bye, snake. Bye-bye. Oh. <laughs> uh, Man, he, he darted. Yeah. Nice work. Sweet. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we were actually on the return journey back and Jakarta spotted this absolutely tiny eastern fence lizard darting under some leaf litter. I don't actually know how we saw it because it's like one inch long in gray. But this is like probably hatched very recently. Um, these guys do lay their eggs in leaf litter and under rotten logs. So he could have like literally hatched days ago. Um, which is it's crazy to see a reptile this small. Now, he can be much, much bigger than this. Adults would be more like that, especially adult males. But So this little guy still has a lot more growing to do. Um, but at this size, all he's doing is eating very, very small invertebrates under logs and leaf litter and just trying to stay out of sight. Um, at this size, they're not even very fast yet, um, so most of their defense is camouflage. So they're going to be sitting very still or they're going to be under logs or leaf litter. It is so cool to see one at this size. It is so rare because they're very vulnerable to predation at this size, and it's, they're just hard to spot, so super cool that we got to encounter this little guy. We'll set him back down. He'll just disappear. You can see that gray color helps out with the leaf litter, but let's see if he goes away. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's so cute. Found, uh, really cool Oh, white and blue moth. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, this is pretty sick. I don't know what kind it is. If you know, please comment the name. Oh. She goes. Yeah, see, it's like a little blue. On the, on the... You make new discoveries every day. Alright everyone, that's just about it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed, and learned something new about the DK's brown snake and eastern fence lizard. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like, and consider subscribing to my channel for new educational wildlife videos, coming on Saturday mornings as often as possible. If you want to see more video clips and photos from my adventures, be sure to follow my Instagram and Twitter pages at The Wild Report. Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.